Well, welcome to another Bible Truth broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Gillum. I'm an itinerant evangelist that believes in expositional preaching. And it's a joy to have you here on the broadcast today. I hope you'll have, if possible, a Bible handy, a notebook, maybe something to write with. Uh, we'll find our text again today in Hebrews uh, chapter number 11. We're preaching in these days on uh, Moses' faith. And we've been reminded in Hebrews 11 in verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen. So there he mentions that faith operates in the realm of things that are not seen. And then this is said about Moses' faith. It says in verse 27, by faith he, talking about Moses, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And so in these days, we're preaching on uh, Moses' faith that by faith, he saw what you could not see. And uh, we have already looked at Moses and the faith of his parents. His parents saw what you cannot see. Oh, how many times I've caught a glimpse of the invisible God, saw his handiwork, saw his presence. Oh, I've not saw him literally, but I've saw his DNA. I, I, I've seen him operate in my life, and I have seen that which you cannot see. Then on our last broadcast, I looked at Moses and face pattern. Today, I, I want to go to Exodus chapter number two, and I, I want to look at Moses and face pattern pattern uh, of the last broadcast today, Moses and faith path. What path uh, did uh, Moses' faith take? Uh, I look at uh, this uh, faith that Moses had, and uh, as we look at it, uh, I want us to see, first of all, Moses' foreordained path, foreordained path. Jeremiah said that God said to him, Before I formed thee, I knew thee. The psalmist David said that I possessed your reins. I covered you in uh, your womb. Uh, it had to be an ordained plan for Moses. No human could have conceived such a course and such a pattern. As we begin to look at it, uh, this foreordained path, there's nowhere where we can pinpoint Moses' decision or his profession or some prayer he prayed to be saved. So there's not an experience of a profession, so to speak, in our world, but there is the expression of a salvation walk. I, I believe there's a lot of people that testify of a profession, but there is no expression of a walk with God. Notice it uh, with Moses in chapter 2 of Exodus, verse 11. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian spiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. He called the Jewish people his brethren. He's moved towards God's chosen people. I notice in verse number 15, now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he killed this Egyptian. He sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. He's gone to Midian. This is one of the sons of Abraham, the father of the faith, uh, one that he had with his second wife, Keturah. And so here, 
He's running. He's fleeing uh, towards uh, uh, God's people, says in verse 16. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to the water their father's flocks. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them water their flocks. He happened, just happened, providentially happened. There's a foreordained path. He happened upon this well uh, where uh, uh, the uh, the high priest uh, of uh, Midian uh, was uh, daughters were uh, watering uh, uh, their uh, uh, their sheep. They're drawing water, and the shepherds run them off. But Moses stands up. He stands up for the people of God, and he supplies their needs. The Bible says in verse eighteen, and when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, "How is it that you're come so soon today?" They said, an Egyptian delivered us. They think Moses said, an Egyptian uh, delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. He's supplying the needs of God's people. So it's not so necessarily uh, that there is an uh, uh, experience of a profession, but there is uh, the expression of a salvation walk. It seems like to me that Moses is seeing what you cannot see, and he's following after that. I notice he marries one of uh, the priests uh, of Midian's uh, daughters as a child by her. Her name is uh, Zipporah. The Bible says in that same chapter, verse 21, and Moses was content to dwell with this man. He gave Moses Zipporah his daughter, and she bare him a son and called his name Gershon. Uh, that little word, Gershon, a stranger in a strange land. And so it is Moses' profession that this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I am a stranger in a strange land. I tell you, you're going to have to uh, see something that you cannot see in order to take that foreordained path. Not only do I see Moses' foreordained path, I see Moses' uh, forsaken path. The Bible says back in our text uh, in the, the book of Hebrews and uh, chapter number 11 that uh, uh, Moses uh, uh, forsook uh, the position uh, of uh, man. He uh, forsook the position of man. It says in Hebrews 11 verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt. It means to reject to thrust off, to let go of a hold on something, to leave it behind, to abandonment. Uh, remember now, Moses is the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter. History tells us that he was next in line to fill the throne of Pharaoh. He left all the political elite. He, he left that networking he had had uh, for 40 years, he had basked in all of the elite of Egypt. He knew them all. and But once he saw the path of the righteous clearly, nothing could deter him. He had all the, those 40 years, he left them behind uh, in a moment when he had perceived the righteousness of God. He let go of it. Truly, he had to have seen what you cannot see. Many believe that uh, Moses was not saved till the age of 40 when he left Egypt, when he decided to leave. Faith had been awakened. The quickening work of faith had caused him to break ties with Pharaoh and his daughter. Oh, how powerful God's faith that he gives us is. What did he break from? Acts says that he was a man of education. He was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. Faith let him see that the light of God compared to the knowledge of man in Egypt, uh, that uh, was but darkness. Uh, he was of a great ability. He will later become a poet. Uh, he will become a songwriter. He will become a prophet, a priest, and a king. 
He left men of high degree, all of his connections, all the networks politically that he had. Oh, it sounds like our Lord Jesus left the glory of heaven to come here. How can we do less? This faith will cause us to see what we cannot see and let hold of our grip upon this world and lay hold tighter to the world to come. Moses forsook the path of the position of man, and he forsook it for the path of God. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 3, and verse number 1, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led uh, him to the backside of the desert and came to a mountain of God, even to Horeb. Here he has forsook this position for a path of God. It is the backside of the desert. Uh, this is the place where Moses will be schooled uh, for 40 years on the backside of the desert. It was there that John the Baptist spent a number of years in the desert. It was there that Paul uh, spent a great deal of time in the desert. It is a school of which God trains those that by faith have seen what they cannot see. The priest of Midian, this is one of Keturah's children, uh, the son of Abraham. Uh, the word, his name means to strive with God. It is here on the backside of the desert that God will strive with Moses. Uh, he's taken him out of Egypt. Took him 40 years to get him out. Now for 40 years, he'll get Egypt out of Moses. Says he took him to Horeb, the Mount of God. That little word Horeb means intimate oneness. This is a training ground where God will prepare uh, Noah uh, to uh, Moses to uh, lead and guide his people uh, into the Canaan land. Uh, Moses' uh, face path is a foreordained path. It is a forsaken path. If you have this faith, you will see God's foreordained work in your life. Uh, you will see yourself forsaking this world, loosening your grip here, tightening your grip on the world to come. And Then I see it involves Moses' focused path. In chapter number three and verse number two of Exodus, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. The bush was not consumed. In the midst of this bush, an unbelievable happening, the angel of the Lord. Most people believe that this is a Christophany. It is a personal, public, visible manifestation of Jesus Christ. Moses is what? Moses' faith is allowing him to see what you cannot see. The word bush here, he saw it in a bush, is only used one other time in the scriptures. It's used in Deuteronomy 13, 16. It says, the, the good will of him who dwelleth in the bush. Oh, Moses is looking by faith into the good will of God, God's blessings upon him. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, it burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Here, uh, Moses is turning towards this fire. Uh, it says that he dwelt uh, in the, this situation. The little word dwelt there uh, has the idea of the, the Shekinah glory of God. Uh, here he is witnessing in this bush God's uh, Shekinah glory uh, to serve the Lord properly we must have a single eye. It says here in verse 3, And Moses says, I will now turn aside 
He's turning his focus. He's changing his focus. See this faith that sees what you cannot see. It will not focus on the things of this world, but it will focus upon the God of the universe. There's a voice calls to him out of the bush. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, said, Moses, Moses. Moses said, here am I. Calls to him out of the midst of the fire. This angel is in this bush. The bush is on fire. But the angel, this Christophany, is not consumed. Oh, it speaks of the gospel of Christ. Christ entered into the fiery judgment of God, went into the midst of it on my behalf at Calvary, yet he was not consumed. What is Moses seeing? Oh, he's seeing what you cannot see. He tells him in verse 5, and he said, Draw not nigh hither, but uh, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Uh, that little word, uh, draw there, get closer. He says, don't get close to this bush. The place where on thou standest is holy ground. Put off your shoes, both of them. A picture of helpless dependency upon God. And uh, he tells Moses, he says in verse 7, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. It says in verse 10, Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. He said, I want you to go. Set them free. Of course, Moses has a question. He says in verse 14, and uh, he says in verse 13, he says, Who shall I tell them sent me when I go down there? He says in verse 14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Tell them that I am sent you. He is the God who is now. You and I, we live in the tents of I was, I am, I shall be. This one that Moses is seeing, his tenses are I am, I am, I am. Moses is seeing what you cannot see. Oh, for a glimpse of the crucified Christ seeing him, focusing our attention upon him. Then last of all, I see today Moses' faithful path. It says back there in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 27, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, seeing him as invisible. Moses will endure 10 plagues, but in those plagues he will see the unseeable. He'll see the unseen. There was water turned into blood. All the fish died. There was nothing to drink. Frogs covered the land all in the houses. Uh, there came uh, uh, lice upon all the land. Uh, in Exodus uh, chapter number 8 and uh, verse number 21. The Bible says, And else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, upon thy servants, upon thy people, in thy house, and the house of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies on all the ground world, all the Egyptians, all the house, just swarms of flies. But he says in verse 22, I will sever separate. I'll make a difference. That day in the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, there'll be no swarms of flies. In the world is Moses seeing. Oh, he's seeing what you can't see. There are all kind of flies just a short ways from there down in Goshen where the Jews live. No flies. It says in chapter number nine and uh, verse number three, he says, and behold, the hand of the Lord is upon the cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the ass, upon the camels, upon the oxen, upon the sheep. It shall be a very grievous Miriam. The Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. It shall nothing die of all that the children of Israel. He's going to kill all of their stock. 
all of their uh, animals with a murim, a, a disease. Down in Goshen, <laughs> they, their animals are fine. The world is Moses seeing. Oh, he's seeing what you can't see. Oh, he's seeing the handiwork of God, his DNA. I notice in chapter 9 and verse 10, they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up with toward heaven and became boils breaking forth with blands upon the men and upon the beast. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils were upon the magicians and all the Egyptians. It covered up with them. Moses ain't got no boils on him. I feel assured there's no boils breaking out down there on the Jews. Notice in chapter number 9, verse 23, Moses stretched forth his rod towards heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail. Fire ran along upon the ground. The Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail, fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Hail smoked throughout all the land. He said in verse 26, only in the land of Goshen were the children of Israel. <laughs> there was no hail down there. What is Moses seeing? Oh, he's seeing what you can't see. I notice in chapter 10 and verse number 14, the locusts went over all the land of Egypt and rested on all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them, there were no such locusts as theirs. They covered the face of the whole earth so the land was darkened. They did eat every herb of the land, all the fruit of the trees and hail left. There remained not even a green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. I can't help but believe that there was no locusts down in uh, Goshen uh, where the Jews live. What in the world's Moses seeing? Oh, he's seeing what you can't see. I notice in Exodus uh, chapter number 10, verse 21, the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven that there may be darkness on the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven. There was a thick darkness all the land of Egypt. Three days they saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light. And darkness down there for three days. Asked those Jews, how about this, Daniel? All oh, gracious. It ain't, the sun ain't set down here for three days. It's been bright sun shining. Oh, in the world is Moses seeing. By faith, he is seeing what you cannot see. And in Exodus chapter 11, verse 5, And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sit upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservants behind the meal, and all the firstborn of the beasts. God's going to walk throughout the land. He's going to kill in every Egyptian, the oldest son and the oldest animal of every breed, going to kill them. And I'm going to deal with that in our next message, uh, that, uh, uh, that truth of how God protected those uh, Jews. How come? Because they could see what they could not see in that blood of that precious lamb. God made a difference. By faith, Moses saw what you could not see. What a path that Moses was on, face path. I want to be on that path where I see God's handiwork in my life. Reminder though, the old songwriter said that God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. He will make a way. Oh, God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. Oh, how the path of Moses' faith caused him to see what you cannot see. I want to increase that kind of faith. I want to get in the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want that faith to grow. 
I want to see more and more evidence of him and his handiwork. It's been a joy to have you on the broadcast today. Thanks for listening.